so with that being said, I kind of want to dive into a few of the actual metrics that you guys have created. Can we kind of walk through a few of the actual metrics that you guys have created um, at Arc? I think one of the really interesting ones that recently came out was in collaboration with Glassnode. Uh, I think in particular, it was, it was you and Checkmate, uh, who's the lead, in, I'm sorry, lead uh, analyst at, at Glassnode. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there, but it's this long-term holder deflation inflation ratio. Um, kind of what's the methodology that you're describing there and kind of where is it now? Um, yeah, so that, that was a metric that pretty much tried to capture the whole concept of inflation versus deflation, right? And, you know, reassessing on market dynamic terms, if Bitcoin, uh, you know, Bitcoin at any given time is in, like, actually in a deflationary state, right? So uh, taking, going back to the concept of long-term holders, which are, by definition, uh, holders that have uh, stick to the asset for more than 155 days and there's a whole statistical modeling on why that threshold is very important um we found that when you assess both the the potential natural sell side coming from natural issuance into the total circulating supply plus the um, the churn the daily churn of long-term holders meaning how you know perhaps that bracket of the holder base releases coins back into circulation or adds coins back into their cohort. Uh, assessing that over time gave us a relative sense of how, when you measure that against the issue, uh, issuance base coming from miners every single day, you get a sense of how, quote unquote, inflated or deflated the market is at any given time, especially from a market dynamic perspective, as opposed to just, um, you know, the issuance of Bitcoin is just programmed, pre-programmed completely, so it's completely static. But there's um, market dynamic forces that usually uh, inflate the currently for a specific environment, meaning irrational exuberance, right? So what we notice is then when price appreciates drastically in let's say a few weeks to a few months, the in, in, for market effects, economic effects, the Bitcoin actually goes into inflation. Uh, it, it, it went through that in 2017 and 2021 briefly. And when we get that market environment, it usually correlates with, um, you know, uh, oversold conditions in the market. And conversely, uh, we also noticed that when long-term holders uh, keep adding coins into their cohort, uh, especially uh, you, you can assume that they are absorbing both the relative value of the daily issuance plus other coins in the total circulating supply. So that gives you a very uh, a higher conviction in, in saying, okay, this is actually deflationary and there's just not enough coins available in the market for new entrants, right? So if you combine that with, you know, some other metric that gives you new money entering the system, it's a, it's a high conviction, it's high conviction on, on, on the bullish side, let, let's just say. That's Excellent. the gist of it. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I think like the methodology is, I want to say relatively simple, but it's really succinct yet, you know, really clean and, and it's, you know, it speaks volumes.